الحمد للہ وسلات وسلام علندی محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم اما بعد احبت في الله ان وعد الله حقا الله سبحانه وتعالى لا يخلف المعاد الله سبحانه وتعالى when he promises something his promise is true and he never subhanahu wa ta'ala fails in his promises anything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says is true from Jannah wa Nar from that which comes on the tongue of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like adab al-qabr wa ghayri thalika kathira all of it is the truth. Jannah al-Haq. Jannah al-Haq. Wanar al-Haq. That the paradise is the truth. And the hellfire is the truth. Ahabati fillah. If we contemplate that, if we contemplate that fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His promises are true and what He mentions in the book of Allah from His divine, unadulterated speech, tabarak wa ta'ala is the haq, it's the truth. And we as believers should have no doubt about this. That what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us is the truth. And that is from Iman. And that is from Iman Billah. Belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when talking about Iman, he mentioned that the first pillar of Iman in tu'mina billahi it's to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that believing in Allah means believing in the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what he says and that also includes the categories of tawheed the categories of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because unfortunately, there are many people, even from the average Muslims, they just don't want to hear about Tawheedillah. They don't want to hear about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they negate aspects of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or distort it. And this is true. So, when we talk about in Tutmina Billahi, when we talk about believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believing in His promises, as we mentioned, that that of course includes the Tawheedillah, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He, Tawheed, Arububiya, that the Lordship, the Mulk, Lahu Mulk, to Him is the Dominion is, is, is everything. He is sovereign to Barak Ta'ala. He is the owner and possessor of all things. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that means he's also al Khalik. He is the creator of the heavens and earth. That nothing else creates, in fact, that really creates nothing. There's no real other creation. All of this is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of this. 
He's our Khalik. He is our Razak. He's he bestows the Rizq, our Razak. He gives us our provisions. And our provisions will not be increased nor decreased except with his knowledge and except with his giving to us to Barakatala, his providing for us. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Razak Razakana. And also that Tawheed, that oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means that includes also his Ubudiya, Tawheed al ibadah or Tawheed al uluhiyah as it's often referred to. And all of those mustalahad are sahih. They're all sound. And Tawheed al-Ibadah or Tawheed al-Uluhiyah, this refers to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship. Meaning that our worship of Him to wa ta'ala only goes to Him. And everything that can be defined as worship belongs to Him and Him alone. That's Tawheed al-Uluhiyah. For example, if you sacrifice an animal, you say Bismillah in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your intention is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That this is Tawheed al-Ibadah. Or when you establish your prayer, you, you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you supplicate, make dua. A dua huwa ibadah as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said in Sahih Tirmidhi. That dua, supplication is ibadah. So that means that supplication, that is a part of Tawheed. That is a part of Islamic monotheism. And that means you are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And you are fulfilling Tawheed al-ibadah. Tawheed of worship. And as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, which is noteworthy, and a praiseworthy definition of what the concept of worship or ibadah is, because we need to know that. If we say Tawheed al ibadah, we need to know what ibadah is. Because a lot of the differences between Ahl Sunnah and some of Ahl Bidah is in, even in the definition of what ibadah is, of what worship is. Certain things they say that that is not worship, so that's why it's okay to do that to the dead or go around the graves, make to off around the graves of the of the dead saints or the righteous. They justify that because they don't believe that is ibadah. And they have gradation. Some of them say that 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 is permissible, that tawassal or uh, uh, seeking to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by those means, that that's okay. And some of them say, no, it's not okay, but it's a bid'ah. It has nothing to do with ibadah, which is actually a contradiction. But the point being is the definition of ibadah differs between ahl sunnah and ahl bid'ah, or many of ahl bid'ah. Because ahl sunnah wal jama'ah goes with the adilla, the evidence. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, his statement is an, a comprehensive definition of ibadah. And in accordance with the book in the Sunnah. And he says, Al ibadatu, Kullu ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yarda min a'mal al zahir wa batan. He says that ibadah, it is everything that Allah loves and that He is pleased with. From those things that are apparent or open acts of worship and those hidden or inner acts of worship. So that means, for example, an open act of worship would be, for example, if you openly give zakat. 
Okay, you openly give zakat. You pay zakat on your wealth. That's ibadah. And that's an open act of worship. Or you go to the masjid and you pray. You make salat. That's an open act of ibadah. Physical act, people can see it. And na'am. However, if you make tawakkul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one can really measure that. They can't say, whoa, he, he only had so much tawakkul. 75%, 35%, 12% tawakkul. That, they can't do that because this is a matter of an inner act of worship, which, so we can say, ibadah qalbiya or a'mala qalbiya. This is or amal qalbi. This is a, a, an action of the heart. You can't measure that. No one can measure that. And only you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows if you're really sincere or not. Likewise, ikhlas. <coughs> ikhlas is also something you cannot really measure it. People cannot say, ah, he... he they really can't say that he had no ikhlas because they don't know what's in his heart. There may be signs that the person is showing off or what have you, but in fact, no one can really truly tell if you're sincere or not. That's between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those are, that has to do with ibadah qalbiyah, those inner actions of ibadah. And all of that makes up tawheed al-ibadah. As we said, Tawheed al that second category. The other part of knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worshipping Allah tabarak wa ta'ala or this, this Tawheed we're talking about is Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat. Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat. This has to do with the Tawheed of The divine, na- uh, divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has al-asma'i, al-asma al-husna. That he has the most beautiful, perfect names, tabarak wa ta'ala. And so, those divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are unique to him, tabarak wa ta'ala. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, which Ahl sunnah takes as a qa'idah, a, a principle, where Allah Tabarak Ta'ala says in Kitab Al-Kareem, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ سَمِيعٌ بَصِيرٌ هُوَ سَمِيعٌ بَصِيرٌ Nothing is like him. وَهُوَ سَمِيعٌ بَصِيرٌ And he is the all-hearing and all-seeing. Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah looks at this as a principle about the divine attribute, names and attributes, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divine names and attributes that are unique to him, but there may be a similarity in name only. Al-ism mushtarak. So, for example, if we say, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about himself, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءُ هُوَ سَمِيلُ الْبَصِيرُ there is nothing which compares to him, and he is the all hearing and all seeing. Look at this. Noth- Allah negates that there's a resemblance. And this is what Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah does. We don't make tashbih oh, or uh, any resemblance or similarity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his creation. And we say, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and he is the all hearing and all seeing. Now, look at this. I hear, I see. Okay? So there's a similarity in name only. But I am not al basir. I am not as samir. La abadin. Had a shirk. Billah. But the fact that we hear and we see. And Allah hears and Allah sees. 
We possess the attribute of hearing and sight. Walakin laysa kamitlihi shay. However, our hearing and sight is naqs. It is shortcomings. It's imperfect. <coughs> and there's no comparing it between that and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a sami al basir He hears and sees everything. He hears what is under this tree. These dead trees. He hears and sees and controls the life of this, this moss or algae, whatever it is. Tabarak wa ta'ala. We can hear in a limited fashion and we can see in a limited way. We, I can only see to the extent of this, those trees up there. I can't see beyond that. Very little beyond that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees everything and hears everything. His hearing and sight is perfect. So there's no comparison between his creation and him. Although his creation may contain the ability to hear and see. Because he, Tabarak wa ta'ala, created them with that. However, there's no resemblance between our hearing and our sight and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hearing and sight. So I hope that is clear. So that has to do with the tawheed of the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, it's very important, Ahabat for us to reflect, ponder, understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's promises are true. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the Jannah wa Nar, and that's true. And that it exists. And that we will be held accountable for what we did in this life. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all to be obedient slaves of His. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.